In this video I'm going to go through um, creating profiles and how we can take that into scan analysis and export it out as a DXF format or um, sections in SEO format for Clearroot. Uh, so firstly in Guido Scan Office um, I'm going to use the profile creation tool. So you have three options here, you can create a single profile, just give it a change and a half profile thickness. Um, we can use multiple profiles where we can create a step size and a start and end change. And we also have custom profiles. So in here we can add in a change in a thickness um, based on um, features uh, we identify through the scan. Or we can create a, a CSV file with two columns in it, one for the, the changes and one for the profile thickness. And we can import that out and ask it to create the profiles. So for, for this one uh, example, I use uh, 0.1 profile, step size of uh, 5 meters. You can put in the change here, uh, type it in yourself. Or you can uh, shift and right click for instance. Once you've done that, it will create the profiles for you and show where they are. Then give it a base name for um, identifying the, the, the set of profiles you've created. If I just hit create profiles here, it will save them under the profiles folder within your uh, project. Once you've completed the profiles, you can then open the Guido Scan Analysis. So in Guido Scan Analysis, um, we're going to go to our base folder, so we're going to tell it the the folder that contains the actual project itself. And it'll identify the project, give you a drop down if there's more than one, but we've got tunnel one. So you follow the sequence in this, you have your raw profiles, you tidy them up, you then create some filter profiles, you drag them in here. This will then create the um, the line work profile through the through the points, extrapolate the points to create it through it. Uh, we then create an export type, so this will be either DXF or SEO and then you can drag them in there and then create the, the export. So if I go to the raw profiles, you'll see here we have our cuts or slices we've taken uh, through the point cloud. You can actually highlight them all. These tabs here will allow you to deactivate or reactivate points. So I'm just going to deactivate and then window just around the bottom here just to get rid of all this information then go back and select individually I can go back through them and if I need to add in or remove anything and just take out the cabling there okay, and then when I'm happy with that I'm going to right click on the filter profiles tab so you have a couple of uh, sets you can choose. For this one, I'm going to use a tunnel. If I right click on the what I created, the filter profile, I can rename that. So the filter profile is really just to set the parameters. You can set the description. So if it was just everything was one tunnel, you could put the description in here, the tunnel, and then that will apply to all the profiles within this uh, drop down. You can also um, uh, for, for analysing the, the scan and drawing your line work through to create the profile, you can change some of the parameters, uh, point separation size, maximum distance between points, in order to do the, the automatic draw up. So if I just, for instance, I'll just leave these here as is, select my, my raw profiles, and I'll just drag and drop them in there. You'll see it automatically generate them. So if at any point you're not happy with the way it's done it, if uh, it's too many points or too less or it's, it's deviating off when you want it to, to, to stick to points that are actually um, somewhere on the line, we can go back in here and we can modify these parameters, change some of these polling deviation, make them bigger or smaller. And then when we hit OK, it'll ask us do we want to automatically update the ones we've created. Let's just modify parameters to some of those and it'll update these in here again and redraw them. You also have some tools up here you can use, uh, for instance remove vertexes, so 
since we wanted to delete these points here, we can select remove vertex. So it'll ask us to select the line first and then click the nodes and we can delete those points off of there. We can remove multiple. And there's a stretch tool if you want to move a point or a razor. So there's, there's some tools there. You can also visualize it. We can have put on all the scanner, take, take the scan off how we want to look at it. So once we're happy here, we'll move into the export modes. So if I right click in export modes, you have a DXF export, create that one there. And we have a clear route. We also have a, a window format, but we tend to use these DXF and clear route. So for instance, DXF format, again, we'll, we'll create this kind of filter here. So when we drag, we can create multiple of these. So whatever we drag into this one, it'll apply these uh, settings and parameters to it. So it could be then the, the name. So the name is the name of the, 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 the profile, the parameter profile. Um, we can give it a description, pixel width. Um, and you can also add in a, the envelope of a, a train if you wish you can leave that blank and um, we can tell it what um, the export system type for our rail, rail system um, a DXF template if we have one created and um, for the DXF client project name measurement date and we can add that all in and create our um, so we're putting none in here we'll be none 153, 153. We can save that that template. So, for instance, we'll just target client project. Give it a date. Save that to the template. That's a template saved. So, for instance, if we drag one of these in here. It'll create it with that that template. We can then decide we can modify parameters, update arrays, or we can export. So we can export this as it is without a template, or we can just export that out, save it as a DXF, and it'll export it out with on a, on a on the sheet that we've created. So if you have your own sheet, you can load that in there, export it out with that. Um, if we go to the clear route options. So in clear route options here, we have the name. So if it was all, if everything was similar, i.e. the ELR, the description, whatever, we could have one here for tunnel, and that way we could load all the tunnel profiles into this one and export them all out in one, one go. If we then had um, separate things that needed separate descriptions, like a particular signal or maybe a bridge, maybe five profiles in it. So really just, you would create one of these pretty much for each, each structure. Um, because what it will do is it'll apply all these description stuff to, to everything within that. So you really want one of these created for each uh, structure. So I call this um, name on the tunnel. I give it a description. Um, whatever the name of the tunnel is. The structure. It's just fine. The export folder. So um, we'll just tell it somewhere to we're just going to export these files to file extension. So you can have one for platforms, track intervals. This one's SC0. Line ref, engineer's line reference. And the description of the profile. So this is the, the actual export for clear route, what we're going to clear route. So this is the name of the tunnel, for instance. Number of tracks, you can increase them or decrease them. System ID, system ID mode of capture, you can you can change the mode of capture and stuff like that in there. So for instance, if we were gonna go um, two tracks here, tell it we're gonna have the uh, the down main and the up main. Fixity will just depend what you're in. Usually low fixity for ballast to track, high would be for um high would be for um slab track. Um your line speed of the area. So again, if the line speed's something that changes that you would need to split these up, but if it's the same throughout then throughout the whole structure, then that'll be fine. 
You'll notice there's nothing in here yet, so we'll get the track information when we bring the profiles through. We'll save that. So that's our that's this created here. And if I grab my profiles that I've done. Stick them in there. You can then do a export or a batch export. So if you want to go through and individually check these, if we go to export, it'll then come up with the information. Here now you will need to check. Just make sure that the the, the kind of negative and positives are going the right way for clear route. Just make sure you're happy with the cans stuff like that are going are going in the correct direction for your curve and then it's just a case of individually exporting that out if you want to do it for all of them if you're quite happy you don't need to go through and check the cans or anything like that through it we just right click and we would run a batch export and tell where we want to save it it's created the four four profiles in the SEO format. If there's no measurement data in that, then the system data will be there for when it was created. If there's no measurement data, it may be something you want to add in here, but um, and you can always go through and make sure that you're quite happy that the cans and stuff like that and the radius and things have come through and the, the correct signage for. For clear it. Um, and that's it. So that's the basics of basically going through and uh, creating your, your SEO um, or your DXF exports using the Guido Scan Office and Guido Scan Analysis.